Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Vault Games Discord as we are playing live over the internet every Wednesday and Friday. Billy on Eldrazi leading out with a Wasteland and Spencer able to play a Basic and Ponder leaving himself significantly ahead here in the early going but Eldrazi can turn very quickly and a Trinisphere off of another Ancient Tomb off of an ancient tomb, I should say. And that gets Force and Negationed. So Spencer, so far, has done a little bit of cantripping. Has a free counter to stop an early problem card. And now Stoneforge Mystic. And this is playing out perfectly for Spencer. Stoneforge Mystic grabbing Batter Skull. It's really time for Thought Not Seer. Or this is going to be a very tough game. Oh, Billy's got the Warping Whale. That'll also do. Once a batter skull gets down, it's a bit of a pain. Oh, and look at this. Force of negation again. And now this is this is a real challenge. This batter skull offers incredible resiliency. We got a reality smasher. Batter skull comes down. And Spencer totally fine taking five to the face. If he can hit back for four and gain it with lifelink. Going to win that race all day long. Whole lot of basics here for Spencer. Double white can enable. Ooh, big oof. Back to basics. This mana base completely shut down. And a Swords to Plowshares taken out. The 5-5 five five, and now the beatings begin. Eye of Ugin allows for Eldrazi Mimic and Endless One. Billy just two cards left. And Spencer does not need to worry about these whatsoever. He's got a Tefiri. And Billy actually scooping it up there. As that is just far too much. The Batter Skull alone with Stoneforge would have been able to take that down versus virtually any number of 2-2s two that could reasonably happen from Billy's side of the board. Even if you double block, you're losing two guys. And that Batter Skull can just get picked up and put right back down and just continue to gain life every single turn while eroding your board position. I mean, there's a really strong argument right now for increased use of Stoneforge Mystic, especially now that Oko is out of the format. Of course, nobody likes to have their key piece KO'd by Oko with such minimal drawback. I mean, when you invest a card like Swords to Plowshares versus a Stoneforge Mystic or a Germ Token, for example, you're kind of winning. Uh, on the other side of the board, you're by using a sword to plowshares, you're actually falling behind, and then the person playing Stoneforge is actually losing uh, a card for a card, but they've picked up a card based off of the ETB from Stoneforge. So you already have a Batter Skull or Gite or Sword of Fire and Ice in hand, and you've traded card for card. If you repeat that enough times, you're going to end up several cards up and have no problem winning, especially with the inevitability that Batter Skull brings to the table being able to not only reset itself by returning to your hand and replaying, uh, but even just getting picked up. I mean, that is a heck of a thing for any creature to hold on to, giving plus four, plus four, and lifelink. Uh, one of the better effects in terms of equipment, kind of exacerbating uh, or complementing the other creature's power. So like a true name nemesis with a batter skull, I mean, you're just gaining seven life a turn, for example, and a pretty difficult to interact with mechanism. Uh, we've got a Eye of Ugin, Eldrazi Temple, and now finally Reality Smasher. That gets Force of Wills. Spell Pierce, Ben sitting in Spencer's hand, ready for a Chalice of the Void or Trinisphere. Any of these kind of lock pieces, which previously we would think about as like vintage stacks cards, sphere resistance style cards, now kind of 
a bit more played, I would say, uh, in Legacy. Certainly Chalice of the Void. There are a lot of decks that are able to take advantage of that. And here's this Back to Basics. Oh, it is so good in this matchup. Brutally good. We've got a Ponder off of an island that is going to untap next turn. Totally worth it. Everything that Billy does from here on out is going to really need to require... Little pause there. Don't think I'm missing too much as Back to Basics really wrapping this one up in all likelihood to Fairy, making it even worse. Did those lands on tap? Oh, and now all is dust. And Billy is back in the game just like that. Jace the Mind Sculptor comes down, brainstorms. City of Traders getting blown up with a new land drop. I have Ugin making that. All his dust costs two less. It is an Eldrazi spell. Jace is going to look to potentially fate seal Billy, but I, I mean, it looks like he actually is pretty close to activating I have Ugin. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like Ivugan will become a major problem very soon, allowing Billy to tutor up whatever Eldrazi he wants. Not usually how this deck works. It's not like a 12 post list, which is looking to ramp up and use Ivugan to create inevitability, but you know what? He'll take it. We've got Caracas. And an Ulamog. With a Caracas on board, this is a disaster. Swords to Plowshares targets Ulamog, but we've got a Caracas being used to bounce it, and then another Swords to Plowshares in response. Oh no, I guess just one Swords. It looks like it's in his hand. Yeah, Spencer scooping it up as Billy apparently was able to keep the Ulamog on board bounce. I was expecting a double swords there as, you know, you're throwing the swords to plowshares out when they've got Caracas. Generally not going to be a play that you make unless you have a swords to follow it up. So you can actually get the Ulamog out of there. There's totally a possibility that Billy would uh, bounce the Ulamog and then recast it uh, to just destroy Spencer's mana base. You'd get an attack in first, but if you don't have anything better to do with your mana, it's a possibility. Billy could also start using Ivugan to tutor, though. So, let's see. We are... What, 18 minutes into the match? It's some fast games for Eldrazi versus Stoneblade. This type of match can really turn into a slugfest. It can be an incredible grind. I mean, as we've seen, Blue-White Stoneblade has back to basics, can completely shut off Billy's mana base on the other side of the board. Billy can lock the game up with things like Trinisphere and Thorn of Amethyst. Sometimes this match is just staring at each other for several turns, questioning your life choices, but... So far, these have been some action-packed games with some explosive plays. All is Dust and Ulamog teaming up to break through in that game. Spencer on the play, though, has this Stoneforge Mystic into Batter Skull. And Billy, no ability to punish that. Thought Not Seer, such a devastating reply to Stoneforge Mystic, a card that just really wrecks everything about it. Because you're drawing a card. It's not like you just get the card back. You're just drawing a card when the Stoneforge goes... Uh, when the Thought Not Seer goes away. So you're not drawing a Batter Skull. This five damage coming in. Four turn clock. Oh, 
And back to basics comes down. Billy's going to need to make good use of his mana. It is. It's an all is dust. Force and negation. And that is enough for Billy. He is going to be tapped out with no chance to rebuild. He's all in on that. All is dust. No other early game interaction. And back to basics just ensuring that there's no way back in as Spencer takes this one down in three. That is all for this one, but don't worry, there is a lot more. Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.